Hello friends, good afternoon and welcome to EduSight Live Lectures. Dear friends, today in genetics we will be talking about speciation. To discuss this topic we have with us our subject expert Dr. Varnendra Singh Rawat. Dr. Rawat is assistant professor department of zoology in Hindu college University of Delhi. Without further ado, I would like to welcome sir to our studios and request him to start the lecture. Welcome sir. Thank you. So, friends, today I will be talking about a very important aspect of genetics that is speciation. Speciation as the name suggests is making up of new species from the original, uh, originally existing population. How new species are derived from older, older uh, existing populations. And this particular phenomena is a very important uh, phenomenon in evolution which gives rise to new species uh, every million or billion of years ago. So we have, uh, we have concrete fossil evidence to prove that speciation does occur and evolution of new species occur over a large period of time. So today I will be discussing about this particular aspect of genetics. So this particular lecture will be focus, focusing on what exactly species is, what are the various concepts of defining a species, how do we define species, which type of animals can be categorized as species, which populations together can be categorized as species and then I will be discussing about how a species is formed, what, what particular mechanism or processes give rise to a new species from the existing species or the existing population and the learning objectives for this particular uh, topic would be that after this uh, lecture uh, we should be able to uh, tell about the co concept of species, what exactly comprises the species and what are various modes of speciation, how different species are formed from a given uh, existing species. So uh, to start with, I, I would give a brief, uh, a brief uh, like uh, intro. Uh, as we can see in this particular picture, this is a picture of uh, M.S. Dhoni who is the captain of India and uh, cricket team. And this is a picture of Michael Clark who is the captain of Australian cricket team. The physical features are of the both the individuals are similar except the skin color. But both have two eyes, one nose and other uh, physical features are similar. When we compare the female of this particular species like Saina Nehwal, we see that she also has similar type of uh, anatomical or uh, morphological features, though she is of a different sex. And this particular individual Usain Bolt is a sprinter and he also have, uh, has similar features, though he is taller and the skin color is much more dark. But just by looking at them, we can say that these individuals belong to a similar species. Though the skin color is different, the male and female sex have certain anatomical difference. But by uh, just one look, we can come to a conclusion that these uh, four individuals belong to a same species. What about uh, comparing this particular individual who is known for the fastest speed on earth at, at present with Another animal who is known for the fastest, uh, who is known as the, uh, which is known as the fastest animal on earth, cheetah. Though both run very fast, just by looking at them, we can say that these individuals are not of the same species. They just share one character which is running fast. But other uh, morphological or anatomical features of these individuals are very different. To name uh, one such feature is that uh, cheetah moves on four legs, whereas uh, the human, human species mo moves on two legs. So just by looking at uh, animals of different species, we, uh, we come to, uh, we come to uh, a conclusion that they, uh, whether they are of the same species or they be, uh, belong to different species. So basically uh, species is uh, the lowest, the, the lowest uh, group of uh, animals which can be classified, which can be used for hierarchical classification. As we know that all organisms are classified into hierarchical groups of closely related organisms. Similarly, uh, similar organisms are grouped together. Uh, grouped together. Uh, the species forms genus and genus forms family and so on. Each hierarchical group progressively includes more and more organisms. This, this is the basics of classification that at the lowest level is, is a species uh, population 
then species, then we have genus, family, order and so on. So coming uh, to a basic example of how the organisms can be classified using the given criteria, we consider uh, this particular leopard that is Panthera pardus, clouded leopard. It belongs to uh, Panthera species, Panthera pardus species and the genus for this particular species uh, is Panthera. Now Panthera is the genus which has all the large cats like Panthera leo, Panthera tigris. They are all belonging to genus Panthera but their species are different. For lion it is Panthera leo, leo is the species. For tiger it is Panthera tigris and for this particular leopard it is Panthera pardus. So similar types of organism which make different, which are belonging to different species, when they are clubbed together they make a genus. Many genus thus clubbed together make a family. Like this particular organism belongs to family Felidae. Felidae is the family of cats. So all the cats, whether they are small cats or large cats, they come under one family which is Felidae. But the family of larger cats and small domestic cats is uh, the genus uh, for the larger cats like panther, uh, leopard, tiger is different from those of the domestic cats. And species is again different. When the families, a large number of families, uh, they are clubbed together, it becomes an order. Now order here for this particular organism is carnivora. Now carnivora includes all the carnivorous animals, whether they belong to cat family, whether they belong to dog family or any other fa uh, bear family or any other family which includes all the carnivorous animals. Now several such orders like carnivora, ungulates, when they are clubbed together, they make a class, mammalia. Now all these animals are belonging to class mammalia, whether they are herbivores or carnivores, they come under class mammalia because they uh, feed their young ones on their milk and they give uh, birth to young ones. All the animals, uh, all the eukaryotic animals which have a, uh, which have a notochord, they come under class, uh, phylum chordata, which includes uh, reptiles, which includes birds, which include fishes and uh, of course amphibians. Now all uh, uh, the chordata, non-chordata, all of these animals come together under kingdom animalia, which then uh, uh, animalia, fungi, prokaryote, then all uh, uh, they can be clubbed together into domains. Like animalia and plantae can be clubbed together in the domain eukarya. So this is how classification goes for any organism. The lowest level is that of species. Now what exactly species is, I would like, I would try to define what exactly species is. Species is the basic biological unit around which the classifications are based. So for classifying any organism, the basic unit for, uh, for classifying is species. However, what constitutes a species can be difficult to define and there are multiple definitions of species in use today. Various scientists give, try to give their own definition of species that what exactly comprises a species. So at present, there are uh, various attempts of classifying a species, uh, classifying uh, a species of a given, uh, given type and what exactly uh, comprises that particular species is uh, varied depending on the view of the scientist. However, all these classifications are predominantly based on phenotypic and morphological characters. The phenotypic characters are those characters which can be counted and morphological characters are those, uh, those characters which can be easily, e which are easily uh, apparent, which can be easily seen like presence of uh, fingers, how many fingers are there, how many, uh, how many, uh, how many uh, digits are, are present in the fingers, whether the organism moves on four legs or on two legs, these are some of the morphological characters. And phenotypic characters are those which can be easily quantified or counted. Now most of the classification uh, for any organism or species, they depend on these phenotypic and morphological characters. Now the basic definition of species is that it is a biological unit and uh, it, it is the unit which, uh, which can be easily uh, intu uh, intuitively uh, classified by human beings. The humans have the intuitive ability to differentiate one species from other based on the morphological and anatomical features. 
uh, for some species it is required that physiological features uh, also be taken into account because uh, some organisms are very similar in morphological appearance but they belong to different species. For them extra data in the form of physiology or genetic data is required to classify whether they are uh, indeed same species or whether they belong to different species. Now the question arises, why do species exist? What is the basic purpose of existence of species? What is the basic plan here? Why, why, uh, why there are so many number of uh, species of uh, various types of animals and plants uh, on earth? Why there is so much biodiversity? And how, how did this uh, come into being? How did so many species come into being? Why do not we see a, a continuous smooth blending of different species? Like why do not we see different shades of tiger and lion in between lion and tiger? We, we know that tiger uh, has a specific appearance uh, with a orangish color fur and a black stripe. And a lion has a, a different specific appearance uh, with a brownish color fur. Why do not we see organisms which are, uh, which are displaying a gradient of features between the tiger and the lion? Why do uh, they do not, why do not they intermingle and produce new types of individuals? Why it happens so? As we know that all the organisms which are existing today, they have come into existence a very long time back. And at present scenario, they are in tune with their environment. They are well adapted to their environment, except uh, certain cases where because of uh, anthrop anthro anthrop anthropomorphic changes, there is uh, basically degradation of the environment and uh, there is pollution and some organisms are not able to co-evolve uh, co along with that and they, these organisms go uh, extinct. So uh, most of the organisms they are well adapted to their environment because they have evolved over millions of years and they are in fine tune with their present existing environment. Each organism has developed a special specialized characteristics such as camouflage, feeding structures, behavior and genitalia which uh, equip that particular organism or that particular species to survive well in its environment. The organism has adapted itself to its given environment and it is best suited for that particular environment. However, if there is a hybridization that is two individuals of different species mate like a lion and a lion male or a tiger female mate, there would be an offspring which would be a cross between two different species or uh, two different members of different populations which have been evolving in isolation from each other. If this happens, probably it will have intermediate of traits as compared to the parents. That means it will be, ha uh, it will be having mixture of traits of both the parents uh, of two different species. Now what will that lead to? It will likely be less well adapted to its environment than either parental form and it will be selected against. As we know that evolution proceeds with the, uh, with the help of natural selection. All the individuals or species which are very well adapted to the environment, they are selected by the nature that is known as natural selection. All individuals who cannot uh, cope with their environment or those who are not fit for that particular environment, they will be wiped away from that particular environment. So in most of the cases, it is seen that individuals which are born as a result of hybridization between two different species, these individuals have characters which are not well adapted to that particular environment. And these individuals in most cases are not viable and they die. And even if they are viable, they will not be able to produce offspring because of hybrid, hybrid uh, dysgenesis. Therefore, this is the reason that distinctively uh, different species exist. There are distinct species which are present in environment and there is no intermingling of trait and there is no gradation from one species to another species. Now intermediate forms as I have already told they are usually uh, selected against. If they are not selected against then the two forms would merge into one as their gene pools get mixed. In most of the cases, the intermediate forms are selected against by nature, but if they are not selected against, if they are able to cope with the nature, then the gene pool of these two population or these two species will get mixed, which will result in formation of a single species, a new type of species. 
Now, what exactly is a species coming to definition? How is it, uh, how is a species defined? Various scientists have attempted uh, to define species using different type of uh, yardstick. John Ray who the, uh, was the uh, first one who gave the general definition of a species. According to John Ray, species consists of all individuals that can breed together and produce fertile offspring. That means all the individuals which can interbreed and produce fertile offspring. Here the word fertile is to be underlined because in many cases two different species can interbreed and produce viable offspring. But those offsprings are not fertile. So the uh, points to be underlined here are that the individuals which can breed among themselves that is interbreed and they can produce fertile offspring. Those constitute a species. Now, Ray's idea was updated into biological species concept, which is the most followed concept for a uh, for a species. Now, according to this particular concept, species are groups of actually or potentially interbreeding natural population, which are reproductively isolated from other such groups. An important point has been added here. Apart from uh, species being actually, actually means all the individuals who are present in a population, they are interbreeding or potentially interbreeding. That means if uh, individuals of a species are uh, separated by time or distance, if they are brought together, they can interbreed. So this means potentially interbreed. If we bring them together, they can interbreed, which are reproductively isolated from other such groups. This point is very important because these individuals can only make a species if they are reproductively isolated from other such species. That means if they cannot interbreed with other species or other group of population. If they are able to breed with other group of population, then that population will also be included in this particular species. So these point, uh, this particular point of reproductive isolation from other such groups is very important here. It can be worded in uh, other, other terms and it can be said that a species is a reproductive community of population which is reproductively isolated from others and which occupies a specific niche in nature. That means it has a specific role, specific function in nature. This particular definition was also given by Ernst Meyer. Another important concept of species is biological species concept. The biological species concept it emphasizes that a species is an uh, interbreeding population of individuals sharing common descent and the member of this community constitute an ecological entity in nature because they share a niche. That means interbreeding in which individuals have arisen from a common ancestor and they share a common functional role in a common role in the uh, given environment and that is why they share a common niche. Members of a species are expected to be similar to each other, but they are different from other such organisms. This is the biological species concept. But this particular concept has been criticized for several, uh, several reasons. The first one among them being that it applies only to sexually reproducing species. What about uh, species of bacteria which are not sexually reproducing? It, uh, this particular concept does not cover such species. Secondly, distinguishing between species on the basis of reproduction, reproductive separation is problematic because it can be difficult to determine how much reproductive separation is needed to distinguish between species. This particular aspect is very important because how much uh, separation is required for two populations to be, uh, to be classified as species. If they mate, are they classified as species? If they mate but they are not able to give birth to young ones, are they classified as species? So what is the degree of separation which has to be taken into account for considering population as separate species? And third is uh, it, uh, the definition refers only to current population and ignores the species status of ancestral population because it said that uh, it says that individuals which can interbreed. So it is talking only about current population. It, it does not give idea about the ancestral population because that particular population is not present right now. It is dead. So another uh, concept was put into uh, pra put into uh, uh, practice that was evolutionary species concept, which was given by George Gaylord Simpson, who proposed that uh, evolutionary con time dimension should also be added to biological species concept. And according to this particular concept, species is a single lineage of ancestor descendant population 
that maintain its identity from other such lineages and that has its own evolutionary tendencies and historical fate. It basically tells that there is an ancestral descendant relationship between the species, they maintain a separate lineage and they do not intermingle with other such lineages and this classifies them to be a species. Another concept of uh, species was given which is known as phylogenetic species concept. According to this particular concept, species is an irreducible grouping of organism which is diagnosably distinct from other such groupings and within which there is a parental pattern of ancestry and descent. It is say, saying the same thing as that of evolutionary species concept. The, but the phylogenetic species also emphasize common descent and covers both sexually and asexually reproducing organism. So, it is covering both or types of organism which can reproduce sexually or asexually and it is also emphasizing common descent from a common ancestor. Under this concept, any population that has become separated and has undergone character evolution will be recognized as a species. Even if there is a minimum uh, character change from the ancestral species, then that a particular population will be characterized as separate species in, in this particular concept. The criteria of irreducibility requires that no more than one diagnosably distinct population can be included in a single species. Therefore, the emphasis is placed on monophyly that is lineages that contain all the descendants of a single common ancestor will be included in a single species. And the main difference in practice between e uh, evolutionary species concept and phylogenetic species concept is that this particular concept recognizes as species the smallest group of organism which have undergone independent evolutionary change. The evolutionary concept group into one species a series of geographically distinct population which shows some genetic divergence. But phylogenetic species concept would treat all these geographically isolated population as discrete species. And the subspecies under evolutionary concept would be species under the phylogenetic species concept. Therefore, in general more species would be recognized under the phylogenetic species concept as compared to biological species concept or evolutionary species concept. Another type of uh, species concept is typological species concept which is more of historical value than a scientific value because this is a pre-Darwinian idea wherein species is defined uh, by fixed and unchanging features which means that species do not evolve over time. After the Darwin's discovery these ideas were discarded but creationists uh, still cling to the typological species concept and often they, uh, they uh, talk about types rather than species. This particular uh, picture shows two frogs which look very much similar. These are species of hyla but earlier they were classified as same species but later it, uh, it came to be known that they have different mating calls, they have different vocal patterns and they were later on classified as different species hyla versicolor and hyla cryo chrysocilis. But based on the typological species concept they would have been classified as same species under same species. Another uh, concept is recognition species concept which was given by Patterson who says that a species is a set of organism with a shared specific mate recognition system abbreviated as SMRS. The specific mate recognition system is the sensory method by which organism recognize potential mate that is all the organism of a given species will recognize potential mate through some sensory, uh, sensory mechanism and therefore they, uh, they should be classified under same species. And another more concept another concept is ecological species concept which says that the set of resources and habitats exploited by the members of a species form the species ecological niche. Therefore, it defines species as a set of organisms exploiting a single niche. All the organisms which are exploiting a single niche or which belong to a single niche, they are classified as species under ecological species concept which of course is not true. And uh, when this particular uh, thing happens that uh, all the species are uh, utilizing a similar niche, there would be a, a competitive exclusion amongst one or more of the species and this concept is basically not, uh, not uh, does not stand the test of the time. Moreover, different life stages of a given species might occupy different niche. So, this is an example of Hawaiian honey creepers. How different uh, species are occupying different niche, niche. They, these particular honey creepers uh, utilize honey from, uh, utilize uh, 
uh, flowers uh, take they can take out nectar from different types of flowers and accordingly they have different types of beaks so what exactly is the application of species concept how it can be applied uh, with this particular example i would be able to explain that in marine cop copepod uh, immense diversification has been seen and copepods are small abundant crustaceans there are numerous types uh, present in estuaries in northern hemisphere and they have been traditionally grouped into one species on the basis of similarity of their appearance these are a few pictures these are different species though they look alike however a study uh, compared gene sequences of populations and carried out breeding trials and showed that eight different phylogenetic species exist which are reproductively isolated so clearly assuming species identity on the basis of morphology alone will underestimate the species diversity this particular phylogenetic tree shows that uh, there are various species present in uh, in uh, estuary and they are not a single species as given by the morphological evidence so this is uh, all about uh, application of species concept and different types of species uh, concept uh, i'll be talking about thank you friends i'll be talking about uh, speciation how different species come into existence what are the various mechanism following which different populations are isolated from each other so that they evolve into separate species so this would be the uh, general gist of the lecture uh, this particular lecture so outline would be i'll be discussing how species are formed and what are the uh, different mechanism of isolation which causes population to evolve into species also i'll be discussing about why uh, there is incompatibility in uh, hybrids uh, why hybrid form between two different species are not viable or not fertile and i'll be giving a small a little amount of time to uh, discussing about genetics of speciation and a small uh, small uh, uh, fraction would be about uh, how much time is required for speciation to occur so the learning objective for this particular lecture would be what exactly are the mechanism of isolation why hybridization is not favored by nature we should be able to answer after this particular lecture and what is the genetic mechanism behind formation of various species so we have come to a general conclusion that species is a basic biological unit uh, which can be classified and humans have the intuitive ability to differentiate one species from the other all the interbreeding individuals of a population which which can actually or potentially interbreed and which are reproductively isolated from other such individuals of other population or species can be classified together as species and species exist because there is isolation reproductive isolation between between them otherwise there would be an intergrading of various types of species there would be an intermingling of characters of various species but because of reproductive isolation these characters are not intermingled and species exist as as a distinct entity so the evolutionary process uh, which is involved in speciation requires certain mechanism which bring about a formation of species from a given ancestral population formation of new species from an ancestral species and these uh, processes can be classified as natural selection a uh, natural selection is basically uh, driven by different abiotic conditions and biotic conditions which helps in selection of the individual which is most uh, suited or adapted to that particular environment so any individual which is most adapted to a given condition that particular individual will be selected and same is the case for the entire population so different uh, natural selection pressures lead uh, lead to formation of different uh, types of species from a given population second factor is sexual selection both female choice and male male com competition can promote rapid divergence between species female uh, select individuals mates which have specific uh, capability 
males which can provide more nutrition which can take care of young ones they are selected for so in a given population only if only those males are selected which are uh, providing more nutrition to the female or the young ones or which are providing more parental care over a period of time this population will diverge from its ancestral population and it will be having more of the genes of uh, that particular mate, male type which provides for more nutrition and more protection for the young ones so this is uh, another aspect how speciation can occur in uh, a population and third a very important aspect is that of random genetic drift random genetic drift is basically it uh, it occurs in a population in a random direction a certain number of individuals are selected uh, it doesn't depend on the uh, de depend on the adaptability of that particular uh, individual or the fitness of that particular individual by a random event only few individuals will be selected and these individuals will give rise to the next uh, next uh, generation and uh, so on which will lead to formation of new individuals uh, founder effect is basically uh, for fi finding of a new population in a new place and genetic bottleneck is basically uh, expansion of a population and crash of a uh, crash of a population which leads to alteration in the allelic frequency of a population and over a period of time this alteration in the allelic frequency can give rise to new types of individuals in a population leading to formation of new species so these are the three basic uh, basic processes which are involved in uh, speciation and the raw material for uh, these processes is provided by mutation because uh, unless there is mutation or change in the uh, change in the nucleotide sequence of genes there cannot be any formation of new species if there is no mutation all the species since ancient times would have continued unchanged uh, without any addition without any adaptation so mutation is the raw material and these processes act on mutation to give rise to new species now how exactly species are getting formed classically speciation has been viewed as a three stage process first is isolation of populations of a given species secondly divergence in traits of separated population the populations which have got separated there is divergence in their trait and third is reproductive isolation of population which that maintains isolation when population come into contact again that is secondary contact so first is of a given species various population are existing in uh, nature these population are isolated from each other secondly there is accumulation of traits which leads to divergence in these two population and thirdly if these population individuals of these population come uh, come in contact again they are not able to reproduce leading to formation of separate species now physical isolation is very important uh, for uh, formation of uh, species physical separation reduces or stops gene flow between population and as a result there may be a balance between gene flow and a natural selection for example uh, in lake eri there is a water snake on the island selection favors elimination of alleles which give banding pattern to the uh, to the snakes but there is continuous migration of snakes from the surrounding areas and uh, bands are continuously the genes uh, coding for bands are continuously reintroduced in the population if the islands were to be completely separated so that no snakes migrated then natural selection would result in island population becoming different from the mainland ones because the island population will not be having any more bands and the mainland population will be having bands on their body so this particular aspect that is uh, physical separation is very much important for speciation to occur so this particular uh, physical separation is the essence of N ernst meyer's allopatric model of speciation allopatric model of speciation basically tells that a physical barrier isolates a population or population from rest of the species and selection favors genetic divergence of this particular isolated population physical separation of population can occur by two major means one is dispersal of some individuals across a barrier suppose there is a mainland and some individuals are able to um, uh, able to uh, cross across a major ocean and reach an island so there is a dispersal from the mainland to the island and there is uh, separation physical separation of a major ocean between the mainland and the island secondly there a new barrier might get formed uh, between two of the population so development of a new barrier is termed as vicariance the vicariance event could be uh, there are many examples it could be change in the flow of a river 
lava flow, development of a mountain range or habitat destruction which could lead to separation of two different population. And these two mechanisms lead to physical separation of population which in uh, over a period of time will lead to speciation of these two population. And these two population might form new species. So this particular figure shows how dispersal occurs and how vicariance occurs as can be seen in dispersal individuals from the stock source move to a new, a new colony and they become physically separated and over a period of time they will give rise to new species whereas in vicariance there is formation <coughs> there is formation of a barrier between previously existing common stock population and these two population will also evolve into new species so uh, dispersal vicariance are two method third is polyploid uh, polyploidization which is polyploidy uh, which is uh, forming of a individual which has a multiple set of haploid chromosome of uh, that particular species. For speciation to occur, the population must diverge genetically from each other and any of these three methods can lead to genetical divergence. So, summing it all up, the uh, individuals, uh, the individual populations can evolve into separate species through allopatric speciation, peripatric speciation parapatric speciation or sympatric speciation. In allopatric speciation, there is a distinct geographical barrier between two populations, whereas in peripatric speciation, there, there, exist, uh, there, uh, uh, there exist a peripheral population which evolves into a new species and there also is no gene flow between these two populations, uh, the parental and the uh, peripheral population. And in parapatric population, marginal populations uh, are uh, leading to formation of new species and gene flow might exist between the stock population and the peripheral population. Whereas in the sympatric speciation, a population uh, develops into a new species through some genetic event like polyploidy or major mutation. So there is no geographical barrier or physical separation, still a new species arises because of mutations or polyploidy. So these are the four basic patterns, uh, four basic methods of speciation which give rise to new species from the parental population. Now what exactly are isolating mechanisms? Apart from uh, physical barriers, uh, when, when the two species come into contact, they might reproduce, they might uh, try to mate or they might not, uh, not try to mate. So isolating mechanisms are very much important in formation of species. The two population of species which are on their way to forming two species can become separate species only if they remain isolated for a long duration of time. If they are not isolated for a long duration of time, if there is gene flow or if they are isolated for a short duration of time and then again they start intermingling, then these two population can never become species. The isolation mechanism come under play before mating between the two populations or after mating has occurred. Whatever isolating mechanisms have developed in, uh, in two population of a species, they will come into play either before the uh, two individuals of two population attempt to mate or after they have mated. So there are two levels of isolation. First is the two individuals of two different population which are on their way to speciation, either they will not mate, that is pre-zygotic uh, pre, uh, pre isolating mechanism or even if they attempt to mate, they will not be able to produce a viable offspring. So then post-zygotic isolating mechanism come into play. So what exactly are pre-zygotic isolating mechanism? Pre-zygotic mechanism prevent interspecies mating and fertilization. All the different species which we see in nature, they are not able to interbreed. Cat cannot mate with uh, dog and produce a new type of species. A rat cannot mate with dog and produce new type of species. So all the species have been formed because there is there is a mechanism which prevent interbreeding between other such, spe uh, other such species. There are five types of uh, prezygotic isolating mechanism which prevent mating from occurring and thus they maintain species isolation. If these mechanisms were not in place, then species would have mated with each other leading to formation of hybrid or, uh, or species with intermediary traits. So what are these basic uh, prezygotic isolate, uh, isolating mechanisms? These are basically ecological isolation, temporal isolation, behavioral isolation, mechanical isolation 
and gametic isolation. These five are the basic uh, prezygotic isolating mechanism which help in species to stay intact and not, uh, and not uh, form an hybrid or intermediary species. So what exactly is ecological isolation? As the name suggests, ecological isolation occurs when species occupy separate habitat or niche and do not encounter one another to reproduce due to some geographic or ecological barrier. That means there is certain geographical barrier between two populations which are on their path to speciation or there is certain ecological barrier like uh, some, uh, some type of uh, rodent can be feeding on the top of the tree, the other population can be feeding on the bottom of the tree and they are not present in the same ecological niche. Because they are not present in the same ecological niche, they cannot come together, they cannot mate, they cannot produce new offspring. So over a period of time, they will accumulate a large number of changes so that they become separate species. For example, ground, uh, ground squirrels in uh, Northern America, uh, they occupy different habitats. This is an example of ecological isolation. Woodchucks is a species of ground, uh, ground squirrel which lives in fields at low elevation. And marmots, marmots are other species which live in the rocky mountains at high elevation. So we can see there are two species which are living at two different ecological uh, habitats. Woodchuck is living in uh, low elevation and marmots are living in high elevation. So there is no chance of them coming together, mating and producing new species or new, uh, new individual. At one point of time, they might have had a common ancestor, but one population migrated to live in the uh, lower elevation, whereas the other population migrated to live at higher elevation. And now they have evolved into two separate species. Another example is that of Atlantic blue-headed Rassi and Pacific Cauthys rainbow Rassi. These are, uh, these are two different species, though they shared ancestral, uh, ancestral, uh, ancestral uh, species. They had a common ancestral species, but now they are present in uh, Atlantic and Pacific Ocean because of uh, formation of uh, the uh, Isthmus of Panama, they have been separated and now they have evolved into two different species. Another example is that of Northern Spotted Owl, which is found in the northern uh, reaches of the Rocky Mountains in uh, Northern America and Mexican spotted owl which has more southerly distribution towards the uh, Mexico. These species shared common ancestor but now because they have migrated to different geographical regions, they have evolved over a period of time into two separate species. So this is how ecological isolation plays uh, an important role in formation of new species from a common, uh, common ancestral species. Second uh, type of isolation, prezygotic isolation is temporal isolation. Temporal isolation occurs when two species are found in the same area but are incapable of mating due to different reproductive cycles for mating or flowering. Now when uh, two species are present in the same area, they, uh, there are many chances that they might interbreed. But if there is temporal isolation, that is isolation in time. One species is mating in morning time, another is mating in evening or night time. Then there are no chances of these two species coming together and attempting mating. So this is one of the prezygotic isolating mechanism, which helps in formation or establishing or uh, continuing of species as distinct entities. For example, red and black sea urchins live in the same location, but release their gametes at different times of year. There are two species of sea urchins, which is an invertebrate. They live in the same part of the ocean, but they release gametes at different time of the year. So there is no chance of them uh, 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 fertilizing another species. There is no chance of cross fertilization because gametes, that is the sperms and ova of one species are released at one time and that of another species are released at some other time of the year. So there is no chance of interbreeding between these two species. This figure shows uh, how seasonal isolation of frog occurs in a particular, uh, particular environment. Wood frog uh, mates early in April, whereas leopard frog mates in uh, mid-April and pickerel frog mates in uh, from the mid-April to May. Similar, similarly, we can see for green frog, it uh, starts mating from June till mid-July, whereas bullfrog start mating from mid-June till end of the July. So the uh, mating, uh, mating times or the mating periods of these species 
though they are overlapping but a distinct time period is there where there is no inter overlap between the between these species so this helps in isolation of species third type is behavioral isolation now behavioral isolation as the name suggests is behavior of a given species a particular type of mating behavior can be recognized by the member of its own species it cannot be recognized by members of other species and this helps in isolation behavioral isolation occurs when distinct mating rituals by one species may prevent members of another species from recognizing or selecting a mate which is very much common in animal world all the species have developed their own specific rituals like dance rituals song rituals or many other such rituals which help individuals uh, of one species to recognize potential mate of the same species for example male jumping spiders dance that is they shake their legs and wave their palps and females of different species do not respond to that dance so only females of jumping spider uh, jumping spider species will recognize that particular dance and come to mate with that particular male other uh, females of other species will not be enticed with that particular dance and they will not come for mating so this is another uh, way how isolation exists in the uh, natural species another example is that of fireflies different species of fireflies do not recognize each other's mating signals and as a result do not generally interbreed the figure shows different patterns of flashing of the light by the individuals of firefly so a specific flashing pattern will be recognized only by individuals of that particular species other species which also flashes but in different pattern it will not recognize flashing pattern produced by other such species and this helps in keeping the species isolated from each other another uh, another method of isolation is mechanical isolation in mechanical isolation there are structural differences in reproductive organs which prevent successful fertilization if two uh, individuals of two species come together they are not ecologically isolated they are not reproductively isolated and they come and they try to mate with each other uh, in most of the cases there are structural differences in the reproductive organs so that even if they try to mate and if, even if they are successful in mating there won't be successful fertilization because of difference in the uh, anatomy of the reproductive organs example in flowering plants uh, they have evolved specific structures which are adapted to certain pollinators for example uh, foxglove flower has specific feature which allows honey bee to suck the nectar from it whereas uh, trumpet creeper flower it has specific features which cannot uh, which uh, which cannot let the honey bee to suck nectar only uh, humming bird ruby throated humming bird can suck nectar from it so specific structures have been evolved which allow specific organism to uh, to take part in either pollination or mating as seen here uh, nectar feeding bats which are searching uh, for flowers they are guided by their eco location system and therefore the plants which depend on these bats as pollinators they have evolved acoustically conspicuous flowers that assist assist in detection they have evolved a structure which helps in helps uh, the bat to locate these flowers and therefore bats will come to these particular uh, flowers and help pollination help in pollination in insect world mechanical isolation is very much distinct these uh, insects have specific uh, genital organ uh, genital uh, organs which help in uh, depositing sp uh, spermatids into the reproductive organs of the female and if uh, there is an attempted mating by uh, by the uh, individual by the male of other species with female of other species many time it happens that the genital organ will get stuck or it will not get inserted into the reproductive tract of the female or the male will get stuck and it will die over a period of time as we can see that the uh, this particular beetle has genital organ which has spikes on it and it acts as a mechanical barrier to reproduction with other species only the female which has a reproductive tract which can accommodate this type of structure will be able to mate with it other uh, females if this particular male tries to mate with females of other species this particular organ will get stuck and the beetle may die so uh, mechanical isolation has evolved over a period of time to ensure that different species are not mating with each other and the last is gametic isolation as uh, this figure tells that uh, the uh, please be a nice egg and let me in whereas the x is that no never i don't like the look of you that means this particular egg is of one species and this particular sperm is of another species so 
Gametic, even if the reproduction has occurred between different species, mating has occurred, gametic isolation will ensure that there is no reproduction. That means the sperm does not penetrate the ovum of another species. For example, in coral reefs, many species with external fertilization may release gametes simultaneously. So there will be trillions of sperms and eggs in the shallow water at one time. So there are many chances if there, if there was no gametic isolation, uh, the sperm of one species will uh, uh, fertilize the ovum of other species. But that does not happen because sperms and eggs of the same species recognize each other by molecular markers. There are distinct proteins or glycoproteins present on the surface of sperms and ova which recognize each other so that only uh, the, uh, the sperm of the same species will fertilize the egg of the same species. And this can also be the reason that pollen from one species will not be able to form a pollen tube if it lands on the stigma of a different species. So this is the uh, isolation at the, at the most basal level that is gametic isolation. Now these were the uh, prezygotic isolating mechanism which do not let organism either to, uh, or either to mate or even if they mate they do not let the organism to, uh, to fertilize, the sperm to fertilize egg of the other species. In, in case that happens that organism is able to mate and uh, the, uh, the uh, sperm is released into the reproductive tract of the female, then post zygotic isolating mechanism will come into play. That is if the zygote is formed, then these mechanism will come into play. These isolating mechanism, they prevent the hybrid zygote from developing into healthy and fertile adults. There are three likely cases that will occur to ensure that hybrid does not reproduce. Even if two species interbreed and a zygote is formed, there are mechanisms which will come into play which will ensure that uh, the hybrid which is produced um, by such particular uh, interbreeding, it is not able to produce young ones. First one is zygote mortality. Zygote mortality is a result of chromosomal incompatibility. Even if individuals of two species come together and they interbreed, even if the egg is, uh, the sperm is able to fertilize egg of some other species, because of chromosomal incompatibility between these two species, the zygote will not survive, it will die. So this is the first level of isolation that zygote from two different species will not be able to see the day or it will not be able to survive. Second is hybrid inviability. Hybrid inviability is when the embryo does develop, but the hybrid experiences reduced fitness and often, often an early death. So even if the uh, hybrid zygote is able to develop, even if the embryo is able to develop and even if the uh, young one is born, it will be showing reduced fitness and in most of the cases it will be showing an early death. So that is the second level of post zygotic isolation. Third level of post-zygotic isolation is hybrid infertility. It occurs when a hybrid develops into a mature adult but is unable to undergo successful meiotic division and is unable to produce offspring. So we saw that the first level is zygote mortality. First case zygote will die. If zygote does not die, if it survives, then hybrid might be born. Even if hybrid is born, it might be inviable. It will not survive for, uh, for a long time. Even if a zygote uh, uh, is born, if a young one is born, the young one might not be viable and it won't be able to survive for a long time. Third case, even if the, uh, the hybrid is able to survive, if it is viable, it might be infertile. That means whatever hybrid is being born, whatever hybrid individual is being born, it cannot reproduce with its own type and produce new types of organism. This is commonly seen in donkey and horse hybrid mules. Mules are produced as a result of interbreeding between donkeys and horses. But mules are never fertile. They cannot, mules cannot interbreed among themselves and produce new mules. Or anytime we need mules, we have to interbreed uh, donkey and horses, which will produce mules, which are, in, uh, which are viable but infertile creatures. And last is hybrid breakdown. That is, even if the hybrid individuals or the, uh, the individuals which are born as a result of interbreeding, even if they are born, the uh, F2, or F2 or back cross hybrid, that is the individuals, uh, the young ones of hybrid, or if the hybrid back cross with one of the parental type, they have reduced viability or fertility. So these are the post-zygotic uh, isolating mechanism which come into play to ensure that hybrids are not born. 
and it is generally seen that the magnitude of prezygotic and postzygotic isolation both increases with time the greater the time of uh, separation or isolation of the two population of a species the magnitude of prezygotic and postzygotic isolation would be greater for example in drosophila it has been seen that it takes about 1.5 to 3 million years for complete isolation to occur to evolve between two different species or uh, two different population of the same species for them to develop into a new species and in marine bivalves it may take 4 to 6 million years among recently separated groups it has been seen that prezygotic isolation is generally stronger than postzygotic isolation so that organism does not spend its energy prezygotic isolation is stronger so that it, uh, the organisms are not spending their energy in mating itself and the third is that in the early stages of speciation hybrid sterility or inviability is almost always seen in the heterogametic sex in most of the cases of uh, interbreeding hybrid sterility or inviability is seen in heterogametic sex which is uh, males in most of the cases like in humans xy and the other mammals which have xy method they uh, the males are uh, inviable in most of the cases whereas females might be viable thank you on that note i would like to thank sir for this very interesting discussion and thank you dear friends for watching our show stay tuned and keep watching thank you